can go. What's a bezel? This is a bezel. I think more important is to ask what's in a bezel. Anything you want these days. It can be old watch parts, buttons, glass shards, twigs, bits of leaves, uh, little tiny dried flowers. Anything you like can be in a bezel besides the typical things like a watch crystal or um, stone. Most people set a stone in a bezel. But today we're going to talk about how you can use ice resin to top the things that you put in a bezel and then make your own creative jewelry out of it. Last night I had a real good time with ice resin. I poured a whole bunch of bezels and some of them I did in typical bezels like this which we carry at our bisuboutiques.com website but I did also some things in atypical bezels such as an old watch case. An old watch case makes a great bezel. Also an old tin makes a great bezel. Like an old aspirin tin, great bezel. Anything that can hold and contain, contain something can be a bezel. And it gets really exciting when you get creative and you look for kind of found items or you find ways to layer bezels, maybe one within another within another. Or maybe use a bezel and put an old soda pop bottle with the cork inside of it, leave the fluted side out, put some rings, and layer, layer, layer with thin bits of resin until you build it up and you make a focal. Lots of cool things to be done. But like I say, it starts out for me with ice resin. I know I talk about diamond glaze a lot, but honestly you need to know that diamond glaze is a craft product. And it's good in the short haul. If you're in a hurry, you don't have to mix it. Uh, it dries real fast. Um, on my flowers and leaves and stuff that I do, it, it, the finish is fine. That's why they call it diamond glaze. It's, it's relatively hard, but it does sometimes react to acid. And if you don't seal images properly or some old metals, it may react to it and cause bluing. Sometimes right away, sometimes down the road. So what you have to do with those items is you have to seal them first. And one way that you would seal uh, an image whether you're putting it in diamond glaze or ice resin, because you do have to seal it for ice resin too, is to use contact paper. I like this nice quality contact paper, the contact brand paper, clear. And as you see, I folded it. Now I haven't peeled the backing off because I'm not ready to use it right now, but I would pull that backing off, lay my image in there, face out, and then like make a sandwich and just fold it over and then my image would be totally encased in here. Okay, and then I would cut out around it to fit my bezel and I would need to burnish down around the edge of whatever I put in here. Just burnish down, flatten, and seal really good so that nothing would leak inside that. And then I'm ready to go. Another thing you can do is Mod Podge. Some people like to Mod Podge. You have to do front and back. But we're getting back to the diamond glaze, uh, with the diamond glaze, you can still have bluing, you can still have problems, a lot more bubble issues, and diamond glaze is, like I say, it's a crafts product. It's, it's good for a quick fix, quick finish. Um, we want to graduate to something a little better. Ice resin is jeweler's grade. That means it's never going to yellow, it's never going to blue on you, very few bubbles, dries hard as nails, it's museum quality. So when you get to the place where you want to take your stuff to the next level, then you want a, quali quali you want a quality product like ice resin. And that's why we carry it at Vista Boutiques. And truth be told, this is the best finish and this is what I prefer, but sometimes in the interest of time, especially over paint, I do use the diamond glaze because it doesn't tend to blue on the paint for some reason. But over images, it can be a problem. Not this, so long as you sealed it. Now, I'm going to be real bold, and I am going to attempt on camera to mix a small batch of ice resin for you. And I need you to know that ice resin is fuzzy, fussy in the sense that you must mix it properly. The ratios have to be just right. So I'm going to stick my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing.
first you start with the resin and you might want to mix your resin put your resin into one cup by itself and you're going to do um, these are the little cups that come with your kit you're going to go to one tablespoon so here I go now pour it in slowly because all of a sudden at the very end you might get a big uh, glurp or plop of resin come out and then you have too much and it's going to throw your, it, your ratio off. So when it looks like it's about getting there, slow up. It's about there. Maybe one more blob. Okay. And it's really good to hold it up to your eye. It's just under. Okay. That's good. Don't worry about what's coming off the side of it. Um, right now, I'd like to get that back in the bottle, though. We don't want to waste any because it's really good stuff. And it, it costs a little more than diamond glaze, but well worth it. Okay, um, then we go with the hardener, which is the part B. And actually, if you get a little bit more hardener in it, it, it won't be a problem. You don't want to get a lot, but if you would have a little bit more hardener, than one tablespoon, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But one thing you don't want to get is too much resin. And you'll see the hardener is running out a lot more quickly than the resin. The resin is a lot thicker than the hardener. Okay, slow up, slow up, slow up. Okay, need a little bit more. Slow up. Really raise it up to eye level. And you can see what's going on better. Okay? Maybe just a tad. Okay, I'm good. So now I'll put the lid on that. And I guess I'll have to let it dribble for now. Not on there. Okay. Now, I'm going to slowly pour the hardener into the resin. Very slowly. And you'll see that they are kind of distinctly different. You, you'll see the difference, you know, when you're putting them together at first. Make sure all of that comes out all of that hardener into there. Because what will happen, guys, is if, if you don't mix this right and get your ratio just right, it's not like me, you know, mixing a cake. I tend to get things off. And you know what happens sometimes when you're mixing a cake and you don't put in just the right amounts, it gets kind of screwy on you and you have a weird cake. So what happens is you make all this stuff and you're working hard and you put all the ice resin on it and it doesn't come out. So you got to get the ratio right. Now, Robbie, you want to come over here and, and come over my shoulder. Maybe you can move slowly and see how this is mixing up. Now, actually, I've got to do this for two minutes, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and just talk to you while I do it because I'm, I want to pour it so that you can see me do it. But this has to be mixed for, for two minutes. And kind of go down and bring it up like this. Don't beat it like you're beating batter. You know, go like this. And you can even count to yourself, one, two, three, and, and go all the way up to 120, which would be two minutes. But I'm going to kind of go by eye, as I've mixed a bit of this stuff. Not as much as I should have yet, but I will be doing a lot more. Because what I want to do, Robbie, if you want to focus in over here on this book, you see this book here? It's called Explore, Create, and Resonate. Well, this book in my humble opinion, is the manual for ice resin. I took the ice resin class from Susan Leonard Kasmer uh, last May at Art and Soul, and my life was changed, honestly. Um, I just felt like I'd come home. I've been playing with resin for 20 years, but I never saw a resin that w worked like this. It's, it's just low odor, low bubbles, um, you, your skin can become sensitized to it if you use tons and tons of it. You're pouring bezels all the time, day in, day out, you know. Uh, you could get sensitive, but it's not likely. Most people are not allergic to it. It is totally non-toxic, um, so it's a good thing. But you just keep mixing this up, mixing this up, until it's really folded well. Now you see, can you see, maybe Rob, you can get a little close without making it blur. Um, there are some bubbles rising to the top. Don't worry about it. They'll, most of them will pop all on their own. Now, 
ideally you need to let the ice resin rest after you mix it well for about five minutes so what we're going to do that while it's resting is I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I did yesterday and Rob's going to come over my shoulder I'm going to show you my successes I'm going to show you my failures now Jen Cushman who wrote the book explore create resonate says there are no failures with ice resin that anything that doesn't quite come out to your liking can be fixed and we did learn that in Susan's class I still need to do some more reading about the fixes I'm not real clear on all of them yet but you know what we're gonna do this together it's gonna be a journey I wanna go all the way through this book maybe even to the place where they're casting resin and I haven't done that yet I watched Susan do it in class but I was so intrigued with my own project I didn't pay attention I was a bad student but anyway, now I'm going to let the resin rest for a few moments and show you some of the things that I did yesterday. So, let me see. Okay, now, if you want to come over here, these are some things I did a while ago. This is my secret heart bezel, which is actually just one of my patina hearts that I, I did with the oven patina, and then I did, uh, I can't remember, some kind of a glaze that I had in the drawer, and it came out looking like raccoon pottery. But, um... Anyway, this is resined paper, and that's why it's turned all dark, because it's kind of um, gets a little transparent. And uh, I put a charm down in it. It's not very elaborate. I wish I'd done more to it, but it's hard as nails. I've had it a long time. And here's my uh, steampunk ring that I've showed you so many times. This, was, this part here was done in Susan's class, and I applied it to the ring shank. Okay, um... These pieces are ones that I did yesterday, and they're just a little tacky. Now, ice cures in about 10-12 hours. If you come to a batch of ice and you touch it in 10-12 hours, it's really, really, really sticky. Um, if you got some sunshine outside, some hard sunshine, you could take it out in the sunshine for a while, or put it under a task lamp, and it should cure. Um, but... If it doesn't, after three days, you may need to pour again and then top it, and then that might take care of it. I've, I've done that. But uh, these, these um, they're okay, but I stuck my finger on this one. I have a mark, and I don't like it, so I may pour over it again. This one is an example of I did not get my image sealed tightly enough. I didn't burnish around the edge. So you see how this has gone dark? But it's a nice example of a double layer bezel. First I did the bottom bezel, then this one. So it's kind of cool. You know, with altered art, I don't really mind some of the darkening and stuff. It, it just looks old to me. But you know, you might have something where you, you really don't want that to happen. So in that case, you've got to be sure that you burnish your paper, your contact paper down really good over it. You know, like you want to take a, a, a stick and just, you know, just push that paper down all around it so there's no, no way that something can get in. Now this one I showed on Facebook this morning. This one really came out well. These are not bubbles. They're uh, little bitty things I threw in that rose to the top. And I'm fine with it. I like it. I love how this came out. Um, there's watch parts and bezels and paper and buttons and pieces of mica. It's an old watch. A pocket watch. See, I'll hang through this and I will make myself a fabulous be uh, pendant. This is mine. I'm not selling it. Don't even ask <laughs> I like the I'll make some more. Maybe we'll put start putting them on the website. Um, this is a bezel that I did yesterday that it didn't top all the way out. And why it didn't is because if you see this glurp on the back, evidently this part here wasn't sealed. You know, there was some way that it could get out. So it leaked. Now I can clean that up. All is not lost. So what I'm going to do is after my, my um, resin there is... Um, rested a little bit. I'm, I put a few art shards over that as a second layer and I'm going to pour again so that I can get this up to the surface. And then I'm not going to clean this back off until I do that because maybe that will provide a little bit of a seal for me and then it won't be a problem. Um, this one, same way, I got some smudges on that. Can you see? It's kind of weird. Cool, cool. Uh, what I did is I took a bamboo bezel and see I've got some cleanup to do here and we'll get into cleanup probably in another video. Uh, but anyway, I took an open back bezel like this one here, and we're going to talk more about this in a minute, 
and I glued it on top of here so it would make me a deeper bezel. So there's an idea for you. Take a 35 millimeter open back and glue it to a 35 millimeter bamboo bezel from our website and you'll have a deeper well for your bezel. I got a whole watch movement in there. But I need to put a little bit more ice resin over top of this because it's just kind of funky. I could leave it like that because it looks old, but I think I'm going to do it just to do it. Okay, now what's interesting here is this is an open back bezel as this was. Say for example you just had like a ring like this. That would be an open back bezel. bezel okay? Um, I had a piece I did. Here's one. You see again you had some leakage on this one. But what I did was I took this and I put it on top of this. Glued it the rim down and then I inlaid into that after I'd set my image. And then, so it made me a deeper bezel, okay? So that did it. Okay, um, but what I did with this is I put this open back bezel on contact paper, and then I burnished around the back of it really good. Now, if you don't burnish around the back of it really good, here's one I poured yesterday. This was a dumb thing. I put this on contact paper that had a wrinkle or a crease in it, so now it transferred to my resin. Not cool. Also, I had leakage all over the place. And it's just really weird. So I'm going to probably put a little bit more resin over this too. But it has a strange crackle effect to it that I almost kind of like, even just as it is. So like I say, you know, it's not necessarily everything's all a loss. You know, if you, if you like imperfections, then it's okay. I think actually I might glue it to this and then pour a little bit more resin. And then I'll have a nice pendant. And that will be kind of neat. Won't it be like a bee on a flower? Not bad. Okay. So anyway, on this one, getting back to this because I keep getting off of it, the open bezel is put onto the back of the on the contact paper, laid on there, and then burnished so it seats down good. Okay? Now I'm gonna pour. Okay? So I've got all my stuff in there. I'm gonna pour and let's see what happens. Now you see I'm just doing it very slowly. Thin trickle. Don't just go, you know, because it, it tends to kind of like grow. And it tends to kind of seal itself. So it's better for you not to put enough than to put too much and then, oh, you got a big mess. And it's not like that you can't clean the mess up. But it's like, why do it? Why clean it if you don't have to? Okay, so now I'm quitting. Because it's, it's getting to be about filled. Okay, better for me to go back if I have to. I don't think I'll have to. Do you see how that all went in there? And you can always, like if you see a bubble come or something, take a little toothpick or if you place it in cover and just pull it over. Just pull it out to the edge. Pull it out to the edge. See, I've got actually a button sticking up here. But you know what? I can, I kind of like things sticking up out of my resin. I don't care if it's all down in. Uh, kind of like this one. See, I've got my propeller hanging out. I, I kind of like that. So this is done to me. I'm leaving this alone. I'm going to sit this over here. Now, I said I was going to pour a little more in here. Okay, so I'm going to pour a little bit more in here. Rob says we're running way long. But I'm going to pour a little more in here and let you see how this comes. Now, if this doesn't fill it, I get more leaking out the back. And this is, on, I am on plastic, by the way, guys. you got to be on plastic. They recommend um, that you do a white plastic garbage bag, maybe, which is how I did these. But for the sake of being able to show you well, I'm doing it on white paper with this thick um, Ziploc on it. Now here's one more thing I'm going to do. YouTube did give us permission to go out more than 15 minutes, so I think we'll be okay. I'm going to do just one more thing so that I can try and fix this. Now I'm just going to put a very, very little on here. Okay, that might even be too much. And then I'm going to pull it out. And this, the reason I'm doing this, again is because I want to kind of heal over the little imperfections and smudges that were in this finish. So it's like doing another very small layer of resin. But you can see how it goes, right? So I'm working on this. I'm going to tell you about this piece because we need to be done. That piece has no resin in it. That is just a collage sticking out of a bezel. And I, somebody asked me about that yesterday. Oh, do you have to do resin in it? Of course not. You can set... Uh, you can set down stones, of course. That's what bezels were originally for. Watch stuff under an art bubble. This is a case of an art bubble right here. 
Okay. So you don't have to use a bezel with resin. I just think you should learn how if you haven't. And if you haven't used ice resin yet, you need to be doing it. So anyway, if you have questions, message me. Um, message me at Facebook, would you? Under Brenda Sue Lanzon or B. Sue Boutiques. Um, the, the YouTube message isn't working really good for me. A lot of times when I go to respond to you, it's, it's saying error and it won't go through. So... Uh, get hold of me at Facebook if you would or through my website bsuboutiques.com and I will answer you and we will talk about resin. So till next time for the next thing we do out of Jen's book, get some ice resin and start playing because you'll never look back.